Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on a great viewer question that is to discuss the relationship, the connection, or the correlation between being in a relationship with someone who has been toxic or manipulative, over-controlling, overwhelming, or a malignant narcissist, or even someone who's psychopathic, someone who has manipulated you sort of at a, a very deep and gotten control of you at a very deep and subconscious level. One where you kind of feel that you can't make a move on your own, that you're not your own person, that you're kind of like a rose with too many thorns, that you're just sort of anxious, irritated, irritable, or you've got sort of a feeling of a constant thorn under your skin, feeling that you're just sort of, there's something that isn't just right or isn't settled and you're easily triggered. You know, what is the connection? What is the correlation? What is the dynamic? Well, you know, um, if you are in a relationship with someone who is controlling, there breeds a feeling of lack of trust lack of trust. So in other words, I don't trust you to do this. I don't trust you to clean your room. I don't trust you to clean the garage. I don't trust you to go to work. I don't trust you to be loyal to me. I don't trust you to be, you know, fidel fidelity. You know, I don't trust you, you know, either if it's between a mother and a child, you know, a, a father and their child, you know, a, a, a co-worker um, or, you know, a, a spousal dynamic, wherever you've seen it, if there's a feeling of this sort of controlling, <clears throat> needing to control others or being controlled or having someone who is manipulative, meaning you really can't go anywhere in the relationship on your own as a person, as a whole independent I am. They're, they have to have their finger in the icing. They have to have you know, their credit somewhere in, you know, in, in your I am, you know, they, they, uh, they, the gifts that they give have strings attached. Um, you know, uh, they're just always trying to take credit or discredit or sort of always sort of be on your toes. In other words, you know, there's a lack of trust. And so when we talk about the relationship between someone who is controlling it sends a message to the other party that you are not trustworthy. That you, you know, you can't be trusted. You can't be um, held accountable. You are not reliable. You know, and in other words, and they will usually do this after they've wounded you. So in other words, they will insult, berate, abuse emotionally, physically, and then once you're down and hurt, then tell you you can't be trusted. You know, after they've, even though there is not information or evidence to the contrary, in other words, it's a projection of them onto you. It's their insecurity that they have going on. You know, with someone who is narcissistic or controlling, they're so insecure, you know, of, of, of they have really a lack mentality or a lack of self-esteem, so they need to put a lot of energy in you know, external things, objects, appearances, the superficial, uh, gift giving, gift giving with, with strings attached, um, you know, uh, help with, with homework and, you know, never letting you own your own, um, intelligence, um, never letting you own your own opinions, never letting you own your own strengths, you know, your own wavelength, you know, perhaps they're very aggressive and you're not aggressive, you know, perhaps they're, you know, very pushy and you're not pushy, you know, and so there's this sort of force um, versus, you know, um, amicability. There is this feeling that um, of inferiority and that you are, you know, by default, not going to be listened to. By default, you don't mean anything. It's a very black and white scenario that they can put you on a spectrum, which makes you feel very far away from them. So their self-image that someone who's very controlling is, you know, it, you know, oftentimes is because I've got the better idea. This is what is what we're going to do, you know, because, and then they don't ever give anybody else a chance to stand up, to do their thing, be represented, 
they're not allowed. It becomes a very exclusivity, like a member, you know, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, remember you have to earn your way, you know, every, every day with them, you know, you feel like every, on a day to day basis, all you can do is, you know, um, try to earn their trust again and again, but they're giving distrust. They're sending a projection of distrust onto the innocent, onto the tabula rasa, onto, you know, um, you know, with your own natural feelings. I mean, maybe when you were younger, if you had feelings of jealousy or insecurity, which is normal and natural, do you love me? Am I, you know, and then, you know, you work through it, but they're in the, in the narcissist. So they don't really, I feel in that insecurity, they don't really ever grow out of it, you know, into their late twenties, thirties, forties, they're still always, you know, trying to prove themselves that they are to be, you know, um, given attention to. And so they, and, and if others don't have that same insecurity, oftentimes they'll project a weakness onto. So there's an energetic mismatch and they will project that. And so it becomes like, you're like a new host for their insecurity, if you will. It's like a Petri dish and they're putting in their germs to see if it grows like into penicillin, you know, their own insecurity, they're refusing, they're rejecting. It's a way for them to not have to be responsible and accountable, not have to listen to you, but also they don't have to exercise any empathy. You know, if they don't have to exercise any empathy, then they just got off the hook, which is what the narcissist and the malignant narcissist does. They just, they don't ever have to hear the other side. They refute it. They say it's null and void. It's, it doesn't hold water. Like a viewer said, you're not home upstairs. You know, they just don't even, they, it's like they're looking at you with blind eyes. And so you don't really have that soul connection or connection of truth you're getting, you know, into the realm of cognitive dissonance. What they say and what they do, you know, things just aren't making sense. Um, and so when you talk about really, you know, the trust issue, it's, you know, people then learn to not self-trust and they feel that they're not trustworthy. And so even though they haven't done anything that is in violation of this, this is this inexplicable feeling that somehow they're a host to, um, because it was, you know, imp imp you know, it's like a, a, a seed was planted and, um, you know, and so, you know, in other words, you didn't meet my needs. You're not trustworthy. In other words, with a narcissist, it's always a conditional, you know, it, you, you have to be an, an extension of what they need. You have to be, you know, an A student, you have to be this, you have to be that, you have to be this income, you have to be this height, you, you know, it's rather than who you are, you know, it's, it's their, it's kind of like their narcissistic needs, which are always changing in our, the standard is always rising. And so that's why it's almost like a turnstile door, you know, that they are with one and then they are always having their eye you know, to the other door to see who's new coming in. They've got their ear to the floor. Who else could be, you know, they're always looking for something better, scouting things out. You know, it's just, it, it, they're, that's just their nature. Um, and, and so, but the, 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 the problem is, you know, with the, you know, what is some of the aftermath is to understand, you know, how do some of these troubling states, first of all, what, what are they? And then how did they get there? So, the, tr the main troubling state, I would say, that's sort of always sort of buried in people's gut or the subconscious is you're not trustworthy. You are not to be believed in. You are not to be, you know, taken seriously. You are not to be, you know, loved. You are not to be connected with. It's like they're, they're trying to, a narcissist will sort of, you know, grind you down, you know, people down. That's what we call the self-esteem in psychology. That's your self-esteem, which you have to have trust of self. I mean, that's one of the most formative, um, really sort of foundational aspects. I feel of the consciousness in the human being needs to have that level of I am and to know, and then to trust that and that that's connected to something beyond more though, more so than the human being spectrum, you know, we're talking into a higher realm, you know, there's something that more than meets the eye about you on the positive, on the divine, on the magical, mysterious, wonderful, ecstatic, blissful, you know, there's something ab about your life experience where you have, you know, 
those finer moments where you just feel like you're floating or you're saved or finally your prayers are answered or you're finally doing the right thing and you're feeling better. Your health is restored. A lot of this is connected to your emotions. Um, and, and so, you know, um, understanding <clears throat> this, um, you know, what is sort of that main like little snag hook that's sort of the fish hook of, you know, of, of the wound, you know, what is that sort of final hook? Um, I think is is part of the question too, and it's oftentimes embedded, and this that seed is planted. The, I would say one of the most deep and more intense, and we might sort of explore this, you know, in in future weeks or months or years, you know, where it's like to understand that that is the foundation of corruption, is you know you are not trustworthy, you know, which is a way to control. You know, if, if you can make somebody doubt themselves, if you can make somebody not participate, if you can make somebody, you know, feel invisible, you know, if you can make somebody feel undervalued or not valued, you know, you've just sort of squashed their life force. You're, you've squashed their I am, their spirit, you know, that, that, that cycle, you know, that growth. In other words, it's like walking in a forest and seeing a very baby tree and just, you know, pulling it up and, and shredding it up for no reason. You're basically, you're killing its chance. You know, you're trying to knock it down and for, you know, but it's for, you know, it's as if it was in your way. So a lot of people then feel like an obstacle, you know, or they feel like they're eclipsing life. They feel like they're an obstacle. You're in my way, get out of my way, you know, might be the message. You know, I'm the number one, you know, and so people are treated as an obstacle. They're treated as, you know, um, you know, that they're eclipsing their light, you know, as if you're getting in the way of, of my magnificence, you know, and, you know, that can be once again at the malignant, you know, we're, we're talking about true dysfunction here, folks. We're talking about two true problematic experiences, you know, um, these are the mysteries. These are the foundational mysteries of that sort of bottom ocean sort of undergirding hasn't you know cameras haven't gone there in a while sort of outlooks you know and real quick um we have an awesome viewer who makes some amazing um sort of declarations and sort of connecting the dots and putting in some of the puzzle pieces here who made a real er erudiating comment which i think means to be teaching but he's also a very good teacher and educator and kind of spokesperson on the healing process. And he made a great t comment that, you know, healing is not linear. In other words, it's not always, it doesn't always happen like A to B to C, you know, you have to keep going the direction, but then it's kind of like you go to A to B and then you get to, to Q, you know, all of a sudden it, you'll have some, some healing, you know, you'll all of a sudden it'll pop forward where your journey is sort of not maybe giving you new feelings or you feel that you've lost your strength to sort of pull within or you're not keeping yourself on course or on track or you're not sort of taking your 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 journey your direction in the right level because perhaps you know it was so you know on course with someone else it's difficult to make your own course you know perhaps and so the trauma bond can be like that it's so lin you know healing is not always linear you know which is very very true you know um you know, it, it takes it takes place sort of in other levels simultaneously, and then they sort of come together. So you really do have to stay the course, though, um, and reinforce. And you know, um, kind of when you're responsible for your own journey, just real quick, you know, you have to be able to apply the tools. You just have to have a degree of faith and belief, and stop resisting, helping yourself, and being responsible. You know, and it can be very difficult because it might mean that you're, you know, you're crave, you're you're painting your own path, you're paving your own way, you're listening to the beat of your own heart, your own drummer. You know, these might be your calling, and to pick up and and to be able to listen um, to your calling might be a new, familiar, and scary situation. So if your you know previous path was intertwined with someone who is very controlling manipulative, overbearing, authoritarian, a dictatorship, you know, um, you know, malignant, uh, pathological lying, deception, betrayal, 
playing you for a fool, playing you for a fiddle, playing you for, you know, w whatever, um, jackpot, playing you for, you know, um, uh, you know, a, 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 a predator, you know, they were, they were interspecies predator is what they are. So if you understand that they're sort of usurping, you know, taking your life force is part of their control mechanism. It's to understand that they're inhibitive of, of your happiness. And so that is important to understand that then you become like your own antagonist. You become your own worst enemy, you know, while you're in the relationship with them. It's, it's like part of you is dying while part of you is trying to live and it's not all on all cylinders. It's like, you know, and so to accept your truth in your calling and your reality might be a big step. It might be like a OMG moment. It might be like a holy guacamole moment. It might be, you know, I really have to put the kabush on this. I have to put the brakes on this. No kidding, it's for real now, you know. So you need to get and know what's for real for you and have the belief and the faith and with the tools that we discuss here and on the memberships, I think I'm gonna go and break down a little bit more of the tools individually, just to sort of really break it all out and make sure, you know, that you have all the moving parts to get, you know, at least several of these tools, you know, four to five of these tools working simultaneously in your toolkit. So the gears are all working together and moving you forward. I mean, it's a, literally a system, a structure, a course, you know, a, a way, you know, where you, it, it gives you some of the ability to, you know, get yourself back on your feet and feeling like you've got heart in your own game and skin in your own game once again. And it's working at the pace that you want and you're not feeling like you're going to be making the wrong decisions all over again. You're better getting a grip. Like literally your grip is something more pleasurable versus painful. Um, and um, so, you know, but with that, it's to understand that, you know, one of the negative messages of, or after effects, once again, is the feeling, the projection that you are despicable. I mean, uh, so, you know, when it gets very severe, we're talking in the worst toxic moments, you know, you know, it's the feeling that you are despicable. Uh, you know, um, if someone is very controlling and you're trying to go for the truth, you know, they're going to perhaps resent the fact that you're trying to, you know, call them out. So, you know, on a lot of our previous videos, it's like, what is the best way um, for, for you to get revenge on, you know, the narcissist or the psychopath? And you don't go tit for tat for them. You don't go sending them a Benjamin Franklin sheet of pros and cons. You don't go, you know, it's, it's their ego, you know. Um, it's, you know, th their ego is going to win and their, their ego is theirs, you know, so, you know, you, you have to realize what you're dealing with, with these, with these people. But, um, you know, the, uh, the, the understanding is that the control is, sends a negative message. So once again, when people enter into a relationship, oftentimes out of love, they feel that, well, I should go along, I should behave, I will, you know, as if, I will, you know, and then with the understanding that, you know, you will grow step by step together, or that would be permitted or allowed, and then as you get longer on their journey with them, you find that's not the case, then you have to, you know, learn to correct your course. You know, sometimes you didn't know, um, you know, you you did not know um, um that the outcome was going to be, the development in the relationship was going to be as it was. You know, you did not foresee that. You did not see it coming. Um, you know, you you felt some degree of stability and you realized that the stability was not there. So there is a great de degree of relationship instability with the, you know, a lot of this, you know, um, and, you know, it can get very tiring, taxing, and uh, like a lot of wear and tear on your mind, your body, and your spirit, and you just get fatigued and broken down. So, you know, how long are you gonna drag yourself through that? So it's to understand that you need to repair and restore, especially in those areas where you've really taken a hit to the gut, a sock, you know, to the spleen, you know, what what is it that is really bothering you? And I think one of those, you know, um, when it gets very insidious and very controlling, the negative messages 
is that, you know, not only, you know, are what you've done for me not even valuable, like you might have given them all sorts of time, affection, attention, you know, all your, and you know, you've all this positive, you know, intent and, in, you know, trying to help and love and support. So it's all coming from this great place. So telling you that, you know, your great place isn't great in that you, it's in fact, it's, it's to be, uh, you know, treated with contempt and as if it's something to be hated. So to be treated as if you're despicable, I think is really one of the worst of the worst. To be despicable means deserving hatred and contempt. So it's very, very, it's a very specific, it's loathsome. So there's, and so if people are trying to understand how the negative self image, um, then is derived from this controlling relationship, it's because you've basically that their message has been supplanted and is absorbed and processed by your own subconscious. So it's once again, it's like having empathy for your opponent, having empathy for your enemy. It's, you know, opening, you know, to your most vulnerable, you know, you're the one who is trying to get you down the most, you know, um, and so deserving hatred and contempt. So it's a very different sort of feeling than just being unlovable. It can get into a very insidious level, um, you know, which is, awful. I mean, that's a very, very, very strong negative emotion. Um, very, very potent, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's really, it can really lead to some very dark, you know, and especially if you, you know, these have been people who you have had close and intimate relationships, you know, and had to count on, rely on, had your names on mortgages with, names on businesses with, you know, you know, kids with, you know, to be treated that you are deserving contempt, you know, and despicable just because you could basically, because you know the truth, you could basically call them out and get them in trouble. You're to be treated with contempt and being despicable because you know the truth, you know. So you're treated then to adopt a sort of self-hatred, um, a self-contempt. You know, that's a very difficult, painful, negative. And this is all just... It's through, it's just through treatment of human beings, you know, it's just through negative treatment, you know, that people can get into some very severe situations. I mean, cause of a lot of problems, world problems, you know, if you look at this on, on the microcosm, you know, microcosm to the macrocosm, you know, you can see a lot of parallels, you know, you can see a lot of parallels with what's going on, you know, with, you know, the planet, you know, um, you know, uh, global warming, um, you know, um, and businesses not being disciplined and just sort of, you know, just taking care of, um, you know, vulnerable and, and, you know, creating a lot of volatility, you know, a lot of, uh, vulnerable resources that don't, can't replenish themselves as fast as we're using them, you know, talk about supply is as if the earth is their supply, you know, and there's just not a checks and balances. Whoa, that's a pretty, you know, there's probably a lot of parallel there. We can talk about that and explore that in some other videos. But, you know, getting back to your own understanding of why it hurts so severely too, and it, why it's so difficult, I think, in the journey, you know, to understand what is missing, what is sort of always that hurt. It's that, you know, your, um, um, the, the trust you know, um, is needs to be restored within self and to own your own trust of self, firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, and strength of something or somebody. So, um, to, to believe in, you know, just that you're going to do the right thing. This is what you do. I know you, you know, this is, you know, how you handle things time and time again. You know, it's just, you know, it's just who you are and knowing who you are and, um, you know, at, at, the, at the bottom line, there has to be a degree of, of truth. And this is, in, you know, based on fact and, you know, objective. And this is just not right. And, and it is what it is. And, but at some point, just be willing to let it, it go. Develop the will and the understanding, you know, that you need to um, realize that this happened for you to realize, especially some very important key states, which is, knowing and trusting yourself and how that very feeling can be leached away from you in a manipulative relationship. You know, when someone is controlling, they send, you know, 
overly controlling or manipulative, meaning they need you to do something oftentimes not for your own best good, but for their best good. And to and they realize that and they do it anyway. So even though it hurts you, there it's called exploitation. Um, and so if if they you know and you know who can be exploited the weak the young the vulnerable the unknowing the naive um you know uh the the innocent um you know the weak the meek um you know anybody um even the best of the best can be made vulnerable i mean it's just you know you see this in hacking all the time i mean we can go from the personal level to the grand level anyway um but I really want you to help understand, hopefully you can sort of explore in your own body scan of what that, what is that sock in the gut that really got you really doubled over and really either, you know, that was the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, you know, that crossed the line that has really needed to finish things for you. And you can believe and trust in your own decision making. I think that's where your personal power needs to be is to understand and have faith and trust. It's like a burning flame. You have to always be able to look upon that within yourself and, and say, is that going to make my flame stronger or is gonna, that going to make my flame weaker? You know, And then being able to check in with your own sort of inner passion and your own inner truth as is represented by the eternal flame that you have within you. I mean, that's your lifeblood. That's your truth. That's what you actually cling to. I mean, that's, you know, actually the truth and what you, you can see that inner truth. If you apply the lessons, if you apply the tools, you will develop the self-trust. You'll develop it. It's like learning to ride a bike. You know, you'll be able to do it time and time again, and you won't follow yourself up. Once you learn the hang of the balance of self-truth, you know, and trusting what you know and what you hear and what you need and going slow, if you need to, or going fast when you need to, but go it, you really should. And it's for, you know, your, your own walking, you know, it's for your own, it's, it's, you know, you're holding up your own sort of eternal flame. Um, you know, you need to have that and realize that then you, you can slowly begin to cut those strings that were holding you back and moving you around like a puppet. And you finally cut them and then you feel free and you go, whoa, that feels much better now. So, you know, begin to look at and, and under, understand what is going to feel much better now. So when you say that and feel that, what is that pertaining to? What is that doing for you? You know, um, and what is that for you? And getting to know that and really, you know, writing that down and being able to know it about yourself because oftentimes if you're not used to it being in your subconscious mind, then your subconscious doesn't really know it yet. So it can't continue to give you that command and make it an automatic part of your lifestyle. You need to remind yourself like a to-do list, like an I am list. You know, I am happy when balanced. I'm happy when I have a variety. I'm happy when, you know, um, and, and knowing this and not feeling guilty, bad, or that you can't be trusted to make the right decision because you can be trusted. But if you're so used to, oh yeah, getting back. So how does the self-sabotage, you know, create as, you know, an effect of these relationships? So the self-sabotage once again becomes, is a, is a result of the lack of self-trust and the sort of development of self-hatred and self-contempt in self-derision. So these are, this is, you know, like, People say, well, what is low self-esteem? Well, it's a whole spectrum. And, you know, and so it's a really, it's a very insidious state that you need to heal. You need to understand and just to say, I'm, I'm done. Been there, done that, you know, done. You know, I, 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 I'm not going back, you know. So it's a, so derision is, you know, what, how does the controlling and how does the narcissist relationship create things like um, substance abuse? eating disorders, um, self, which are all part of self image disorders, you know, even body dysmorphia, you know, um, the addictions, you know, the alcoholism, how does that create and perpetuate these coping mechanisms? And then people that identify with these negative, this negative set in this negative list of I'm an alcoholic, I'm a drug addict, I'm a, you know, a fool, I'm a, 
dunce. I'm a, uh, to be mocked, you know, I'm to be uh, ridiculed. I'm to be beat up. You know, all these contemptuous ridicule or mockery is, is what derision means. So it's, so it's, it creates this, in other words, you're in my way, you are um, unbelievable, you know, um, you know, um, you know, I can't handle you is really their lack of skill. Um, and so the negative just keeps growing. Um, when you're in these negative relationships, it's like you're growing a negative bush, you're, ne you're growing a negative shrub, you're, it's not just for the beauty of nature is for something else. You know, it becomes perverted. Um, it becomes dysfunctional. Um, and so a der contemptuous ridicule or mockery comes from the late Latin deridere to the Latin derisio, which becomes the Middle English derision. Um, from the late Middle English, Old French, and from late Latin derisio, from uh, derriere, der dere, dere, Derry, 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 sorry, which is um, the Latin scoff at. So to scoff at somebody, you know, it, there's a, a degree of, 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 of snobbery. Do you see what we're saying? You know, a, a feeling of, do you see how this, it becomes a very, very specific brand of human emotion that is experienced in these relationships and not only experienced, but planted, watered, growed, and nurtured. You know, so it it, beca it can become like a very, very tough shrub, you know, in your, the fiber of your being, which is like very, very unbendable, rigid, and keeps you very stuck, you know. Um, and so derision, you know, um, to be scoffed at. So, you know, you know, as if you're just some, not even a, a you know, a, a fourth world being. So I think, I hope that explains your dynamic and we can take it up again because then you adapt this self-derision, self-hate, and then it's a drowning out of your own life force. It's just a very insidious cycle. You got to break the cycle. It's your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. I hope the videos help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out. Have a beautiful day.